chapter 4. Einstein's classical example does not correspond with natural gravitatory fields. The wise man says, in the vertigo of his genius, it has been proven, quote, that the speed of equal clocks at rest within a system K, rotating with respect to a Galilean system K, depends on the position, end quote. Let us now quantitatively determine this dependence. A clock located at a distance V from the center of the rotating disk has with respect to K a speed V equals WR, where W is the angular velocity of the disk K with respect to K. K uh, apostrophe. Designating with V subscript zero the number of strokes with which gives the clock per unit of time relative to K and assuming the clock is at rest, the speed velocity of the clock that moves with the speed velocity with respect to K and is on the disk according to the example from paragraph 12. Some math problem, it's a long one. With sufficient approximation, another math problem. Designated by plus phi, the potential difference of the centrifugal force between the point occupied by the clock and the center of the disk, that is the work taken with a negative sign, must be applied to the unit of mass in the opposite direction of the centrifugal force to transport it from the position of the clock to the center of the moving disk. From this it follows, of course, that two exactly equal clocks at different distances from the center of the disk will run with different speeds, a result also true for an observer who rotates with the disk. Since seen from the disk, there exists a gravitational field whose potential is phi. The results obtained is valid for all gravitational fields in general since we represent by K the Newtonian constant of gravitation, the mass by M, and the radius of the celestial body by V. <coughs> but there we only have for the spirit of the mathematician and of the philosopher a field of time without any sensible space that conveniently expresses it as a gravitationally as gravitationally relativistic. The negative work implies a change of location in the plane of the circle. It is, as Einstein would like, a centripetal work of the constant force. W square velocity. In fact, the expression negative W square velocity square divided by 2 marks and gives the measure of that work. However, although we are going to consider this event within the strict framework of what's true, the truth is, this work is illusory, illusory, this work is illusory, since what Einstein has done is to compare the radial circumference of the temporal rhythm with the abstraction made of space, plane of the circle as the cosmic subject of sensible expression. That fact, the act of comparison is absolutely foreign to the processes of time and space in magnificent unity. And why it doesn't hurt to repeat it, the second is determined as a function of the first. There is no work, no relativistic work we repeat because a change of time involves a change of place this is a change of dimension to the same cosmic measure of that. For Einstein, the circle has no more importance, it seems like, than that of a generating, a 
than that of generating a variable type of force as a favorable medium for the relativistic behavior of the clocks. And therein lies the absurdity, the integrity, the whim of a genius, a relative content, time, a classical medium, plane of the rotating circle. This example which has transcended so much in modern science, which has founded it, let us put it this way, and for which the wise man has allowed himself to say, quote, since seen from a disc, there exists a gravitational field whose potential is phi. The result obtained is valid for all gravitational fields in general. End quote. It is not, however, the faithful image of a real field since there are not associated with it the slowness of time, the spatial contractions. Therefore, Km follows the mass m and the equality phi equals negative km divided by v is improper because it does not correspond to any relativistic behavior before on the contrary this example determines then this example determines then as we've already said an order of natural an order of nature based on an incompatible application of the immutable laws that govern it in its grand destiny, infinite and eternal. On the other hand, the disc cannot be dispensed with the disc cannot be dispensed with to make legitimate use of the mass in the general formula. The time marked by the clock varies in accordance to the centripetal acceleration generated by the circular motion, which is W square velocity equals G equals KM divided by V square. But M represents a physical state of matter in the tangential place, that is, at the limit of the second velocity. All the mask, 1 divided by V square of the disk concentrated within that limit is under the action centrifuge is under the centrifuge action and it is to be clear potentially more rarefied less dense than at the height of w of the angular velocity how does it look the physical state of the plane or the mass <coughs> or the mass m with the scalar factor of the acceleration of the gravitational vector factor and on which depends the rhythm of the clock it does not coincide with the relative time thought by Einstein note before following further that Einstein's time is not a periodic factor of rest but the regularity of periodic motion and it is explained, it is understood then, that this rhythm, being as it actually is, regulates gravitation. Being that the mass m is independent of the material state of the disk. Therefore, our gravity fields, the real fields of nature, cannot be explained by rotary movements. The negative work, therefore, pi equals w square v square divided by 2 equals gx v equals k negative km divided by v square x v equals negative km divided by v it is closely associated with the material state of the field in the formula then to go from one time to another time within the circular rotary go from one time to another time within the circular rotary is a contradiction, a relativistic incompatibility, because the mass, the mass m marks an adverse physical state, contrary to the relative harmony. From here we conclude that the coefficient negative km divided by c squared 
is not proper except insofar as special relativity is accepted in the rotating movement of the circle that is the, con the contraction of circular matter under the effect of centrifugal force and this is absurd that is to say in the ideal experiment of the disk there was nothing cosmically natural they say Einstein and the wise men that accompany him that a gravity field is produced in the rotating disk and that for an observer contained in said disk that field is real nothing is more antithetical we repeat than an observer subjected to the relativistic action of time at the same time that the space or matter that contains it behaves in such a contrary way therefore it cannot be said as the wise man wants that the results obtained is valid for all fields in general because this imposes by necessity a behavior of the space cosmic matter in accordance with the history of M in the formula V equals V subscript zero deduced from the great example of Einstein's classical deduced from the great example of Einstein's classic example there is no doubt that enormous violence has been committed by applying these methods to the natural events of time and space that contain the cosmos the rotating disk then has no importance it must be discarded on the other hand is there evidence within the same disk for the variation of the rhythm and the relative timing of the clocks the only proof it exists is the only proof it exists is ideological it's a belief that clocks must behave this way it is an erroneous belief but to a certain extent justified because for every action of gravitational intensification greater, cent greater centripetal acceleration there is a delayed change in rhythm the clocks tick more intense and the clocks tick more slowly based on this of course they believe that the centripetal acceleration of the disk would produce the same rhythmic changes in clocks conveniently placed on the rotating circle and in different places in the world the relativistic assertion was emphatically declared before the world in science because the genius associated with the with these centripetal events the idea of the movement of the clocks in a certain direction and sense that is he applied the temporary effects of the contraction of matter and what and what is this matter if it is not that of the disk itself the absurdity cannot be greater than a variable change of relative time in an adverse or anti-relativistic environment our genius applied special relativity to the dimensions of time considering that it generated by centripetal acceleration without thinking at all about matter or circular space it is an error but a sublime wonderful error of Einstein he confuses the effect with the cause centripetal acceleration the gravitational act is a geometric circumstance of the field and is in a word a static vector or impulse that depends on the form of the space as a function of time as can be seen in following the logical order of these events of the universal cosmic time and gender space since e equals f t and in this in space static acceleration arises as a circumstance of it or finally as a second derivative Does anyone doubt it? D square divided by D T square. Therefore, acceleration does not generate time, nor does it exist without the space that determines it. The rhythmic changes within a circular radius may therefore be relativistic or not. The disk, that classic example that has so astonished the world is unimportant 
It is a very beautiful example, very beautiful, but it does not transcend into the intimate nature of the cosmos. The coefficient then that gives us the universal connection of the inexhaustible relations of nature must be sought in its own place that is within the geometric form of space as a static content of time it's that the restricted relativity whose origin of or history is enclosed within the strict framework of the comparison of relative mo movements is an illusion an absurdity nature cannot exist nature cannot resist anything absolutely nothing that is contrary to the functional order of its own content and this was Einstein's mistake when he told the scientific world that the phenomenon of non-interference in the Michelson and Morley experiment was due to the difference in meters and times in the two means of relative motion but it only referred and this was most unfortunate to the shortening of the longitudinal bar of the longitudinal bar without understanding it seems that the other was influenced by the same effect in the traverse direction in the transverse direction but these restrictions as is the case are not independent on the contrary each of them is subordinate or dependent on the other three dimensions within the two respective fields. Both bars, therefore, if there is relativity in that circumstance of the compared movements, they have the same length and remain equal. It's that both are, in this case, within the same field of movements. See this same work later. Therefore, restricted relativity due to relative movements have no experimentation, it does not exist. In one word, it is outside the field of our experience. The rotating disk then is not the measure, the example, I mean of the cosmic processes of nature and its great manifestations of space and time. Non-interference then is due to the fact that the earth moves in the solar field with its gravitational field taking with it the light energy contained in it. The genius, the wise man that currently concerns us when giving us the ideological experiment of the disc was inspired it seems by another classical example in which he refers to the verification of Newton's laws through the acceleration of the terrestrial gravity compared to the centripetal acceleration at the height of the moon in the hypothesis of an absolutely circular movement of the ladder around the earth. This hypothesis is valid for a principle or action of forces at a distance. The moon is, according to this, sustained within its trajectory by the actions between both forces. The terrestrial and the lunar in the same behavior of the centripetal forces capable of producing said circular movement But within mathematical and philosoph philosophical accuracy, this is false of all falsehoods. The comparison is inappropriate. This shape represents the limit of gravity of both fields on the line of the centers of the earth and the moon, and also expresses the centrifugal direction. It is simply a static phenomenon of space as a potential that I describe as Euclidean, not because there the absoluteness of space is fulfilled, the impossible, because you have Km divided by V squared minus Km divided by V minus V to the first equaling zero. This is non-gravity, a behavior linearly Euclidean a stretch against which two celestial concentrations react centripetally, centripetally. The stars then on this line that is the central axis of the dynamic system does not influence each other. They do not reach each other that is that will never be G minus G to the first T 
taken as the centripetal acceleration between both fields because these g this g are these g's are not but simple geometric circumstances of the two respective spaces and in the entire area that surrounds we have naturally a cosmic disorder in the mediation of a time narrower than those that suit the earth and the moon respectively and that which would normally suit said zone. If it were not, there would not be that disorder. It is a field of centrifugal action, physiognomically contained in itself by the highest level T and Y, and those temporal and gravitational relations with the two stars of celestial concentrations are null within the strict sense of the word, as we will see. We have, on the other hand, T subscript zero equals T subscript T divided by KM divided by C square. That is to say that T subscript zero is more intense than T subscript C terrestrial time and T lunar time. These two formulas mean that at the same sensitive point of the referred area or intermediate field, an amplitude of space is verified in the functional measure of these days. This concurrence of the two time frames generates a distension, a distension of the field contained in a single time, T, more intense, more accelerated than those that suit the earth and the moon and already others as regards the centripetal or direction of space as it as its own geometric physiognomy to the masses m and m of set stars but since this continuum is a consequence of the promiscuity of those fields it is then deduced that the space that integrates it cannot be the euclidean absolute since, as is known, Euclidean space has no direction, nor can it be elliptical, since in that case the centripetal acceleration would have to be directly on the masses M and M. Its form is, for all this, an intrinsic structure contained between the pure parabolic, ideal, or Euclidean space, and the pure gravitational field or elliptical space. It is a specific continuum contained in T, and to the extent of the incompatibility of the two times, as those have to be verified simultaneously at a common point in the two, sp in the two spaces. Since each of these times demand the specific place, functional need for the two corresponding spaces immediately arises and these by the by that ontological force of being are determined to the extent of a broader extension of said enclosure the cosmically centrifugal thrust of the two celestial concentrations is evident and inevitable the centripetal reaction consistent with this mech with this mechanic this mechanics of the intermediate field is sufficient to establish before the most demanding spirit the dynamic systems of the celestial bodies and enough to exclude from this order of nature the law of Newton's k m plus m divided by v square which requires in these days of progress and of Einstein the action of forces at a distance or that provides at least when, and when we would like to be more generous, the reciprocal attraction of the stars through a process of continuous actions over time and space that separates them. But this law excludes by necessity of its, of its structure that cosmic disorder generated by the incompatibility of the times already referred to. And how impossible this is. The law is absurd. 
It's just that in those classical days, centripetal gravity or acceleration could not be understood as a geometric circumstance of space. That is, as a static direction or channel for the effects of gravity and for what we have in that singular point of the line of the centers in the measure of a stretch of the field. However, although it is true that we only have one point before sensitive reason, or rather before the disturbing imagination of for the spirit, for our internal sensitivity or our human powers, which do not need the linear the, which do not need the linear scheme, that one is divided into two. Here, as in the entire area that concerns us, the incompatibility of the times is verified, even though they are equal. Therefore, now, as always, the functional necessity of the two spaces arises, remaining between both limits the point of concurrence as a, con as a content of, in the same measure, or more accelerated time. With this, the stretching of the central line is demonstrated. And also, the truth of our law or form of gravitation. To this form, to our law, previously understood that T does not have any relativistic connection with lunar or terrestrial time. As we will demonstrate later, we're going to give it the name centrifugal force of gravitation held here km divided by v squared plus km divided by parentheses v minus v to the first square equals k parentheses m divided by t squared plus m divided by t squared then the centrifugal force of gravitation is proportional to the masses E and inversely to the square of their distance from the static center of zero acceleration between them. This is what is real. The positive here, there is no action of a force at a distance without the cosmic thrust of the field of space. And at every moment, our satellite or moon the same way like the Earth has to react centripetally against the dynamic action of the universal centrifuge. That is, instead of the classical equality, we should have these others, which become, after adding and removing the common factor, 4 pi square in the second member, in the following form. Being V, of course, being velocity, of course, the distance between the masses M and lowercase m, as can be seen from the centrifugal force developed by the cosmic thrust, by the Olympic reality of nature, it follows that the masses m and lowercase m are less intense than what Newton's law commands and expresses. From all this, we conclude that the centripetal force or acceleration generated by the centrifugal field is not in the inverse relationship with the square of the distances or that the intimate processes of the universal cosmic referred to the celestial dynamic system do not agree at all with the field. It is not at all consistent with the forces developed in a rotating disk. This field, the natural field between the Earth and the Moon, for example, is not contained within any, regular, any regularly proportional state, because within it there is no relativistic linkage to T, with the times T and T of the Earth and the Moon, respectively and in the measure of a single field. It is that the intermediate zone or centrifugal amplitude contained in the variation of T does not have the convexity G potential characteristic of terrestrial and lunar spaces. 
and it cannot be precisely because the geometric form of its content is understood between the pure parabolic or Euclidean ideal and the pure gravitational or elliptical. This space, the one corresponding to said area, does not have therefore any relativistic connection with those others. It is in a word a continuum whose intrinsic geometric form is incompatible with any other form that is not identical to it, and for this reason, impenetrable by the contents. That area, therefore, heroically resists the centripetal reaction of the neighboring fields. She is simply the centrifugal center or interlocking of the celestial dynamic system. That cosmic disorder is providential supreme. Because of it, because of the disordered principle of relativity of its elliptical train as the only form of universal gravitation, as we'll see later, the stars are sustained at a distance and it guarantees the universal harmony of the stars in the middle of the great infinite consortium of the heavens. From all this it follows that the rotating disk Einstein's classical example does not exactly reproduce, not even by a long shot, the gravitational fields or the natural cosmic generated by the celestial concentration, but rather it does not reproduce the field of cosmic correspondence to these con concentrations. The relativistic, if the relativistic relations within the rotating disk are true for the times to the extent that they occur in the natural field, the reciprocal attraction of the stars and the Newton's formula would be perfect in the virtue of nature. But this is not what we have seen because the stars do not attract each other but repel each other according to our formula. It may be objected that a winged field occurs like a time field in the same form and likeness as the rotating circle. The absurdity, however, remains standing. A, ch a, tangen a tangential veloci velocity, infinitely far from the center, produces, it's true, the absolute, sens the absolute cessation of rhythm. And as it censors the cosmic fields, when the mass becomes infinitely large. But in these I know the scalar content of the infinitely large mass as it must result fades into non-dimensions and implies not the absurdity of the incompatible but the supreme act by which the material energy has been transformed entirely into its own spirit or in that factor of rest in absolute time as the only reality expressible only by its function of energy in space. It will simply be the limit of all nature as one of the moorings of sensible science, beyond that of which one cannot overtake without infusing oneself into the great infinite and eternal mystery, inseparable, however, from all sensible reality. It is therefore the logical limit of satisfaction of every conscious spirit. But in the rotating disk, any primer understands the same does not happen. In the mental process of reason, it logically ends because the rigorous law of a well understood mechanics with an infinitely large numerical mass of a physical state cosmically marked by a limitless space For the correct comparison of gravity in the rotating disk, its real mass must be limited, although the ideological radius, however, may be infinite. Because in truth, every celestial concentration is a continuous limitation, and for the most part, limitless. It does not exist within that field that generates force. It is very clear that all this is transformation of energy in absolute time, a rest factor that limits it within the sensitive body that expresses it. Being that relativity 
has its entire essence in that compensation with which time supplements space. It is therefore demonstrated that the time field generated by the Einsteinian circle is not a gravitationally relativistic field. Generalized relativity, generalized relativity then, has no affirmation in, the, in that example of our genius. It is true for all this that neither the experiments of Michelson and Morley nor the case of the rotating disk have been sufficient to reveal natural relativism to reason and consciousness. Relativism, relativism, we repeat, according to our judgments and investigations, has all its content in the geometric form of space as a static content of time. And each form, each geometry, has a specific coefficient for the ordering of times and space within the same continuum. It is that two elements of the universe, two places within the, within the great macrocosm, are relative when they are bound by the same geometric directions of space, and also when, despite, these elem despite those elements and places being separated by some quasi-hyperbolic continuum, they affect the form in the same way, as happens with the stars. In this case, relativism only implies the numerical comparison of magnitude, while the first entrails more, and it is, and is the most important of our work, a cosmic function by which all physical reality, space, energy, and matter is a covariant three-dimensional expression within itself. We have found, on the other hand, see later in the course of this work, that the coefficient of elliptical relativity is identical to Einstein. It is not absurd, then, to start with the wise one saying that the geometry of space around the large celestial concentrations is hyperbolic, being so that he only uses the elliptical bond used for all cases and circumstances of the stars and of the heavens. If all the stars were confused in one place, the universe would be unique and elliptical. Yes, if in two, the space would be very particularly the interastral hyperbolic. But in this Olympic reality of infinity, Interastral geometry is very complicated and almost beyond the reach of human reason. However, as these mediums are the constant negligible curvature, we can accept it as of the hyperbolic type, since this would in no way affect the relativistic incompatibility so that the infinite dynamics of the heavens and interstellar spaces and their relationships with the stars are fulfilled or can be fulfilled.